Richmond, and we are back for the fourth. Yes, it is the fourth creative corner. Um, we are doing five, the five Thursdays in April, and so here we are on the fourth. And I feel like every week I talk to, it is sunny in Nashville, Tennessee. So I think you all out there bring the sunshine, which I'm super happy about. So I hope this finds everyone doing well as we're all still hunkered down, looking for ways to exercise our creativity and bring a little spark to the week. Um, as I've mentioned every week, uh, our time together is being brought to you by the University of Denver Library, specifically uh, Denver University's um, graduate program for professional psychology. So super thankful to them for bringing us to you. Um, Adeline says, hello. Hello, Adeline. Well, today is kind of a special day because I have invited us to bring our lovies, our special blankets, our special stuffed animals to the Creative Corner today because the book that we're reading called I'll Never Let You Go. There was a little bit of glare on that. I'll Never Let You Go is actually the story about Edward the bear and his blankie that he just loves so much. So if you're listening out there and you haven't thought about bringing a special lovey to our time together, um, I'll just give you a few quick seconds to maybe run and get a special stuffed animal, a blanket, and I'm gonna introduce you to the special ones that I've brought to the corner today. So real quick, run and get your special someone, and then we'll, um, we'll get started in, in just a few seconds. I'm gonna gather my people here. Oh, I hear from Laura. Oh, let's see, I gotta click my chat here. She said, uh, oh, hello. And someone brought their blanket, Fox and Monkey Baby. <laughs> I love it. Well, here's my people I have for you today. This is Carl, Carl the bear. And poor Carl is missing both his eyes. So I help him get around and see things. And Carl belongs to my oldest son, Cole, who's 22. So Carl is actually getting up there in years. He's 22 now. I'm gonna lay him down there. And then next is Buddy. And Buddy is a dog. And this belongs to my second son, Adam. And Adam got Buddy before he was even born. When Adam was still in my tummy and I was pregnant, Buddy joined the family. And then we have Ellie. This is Ellie the elephant. And she belongs to my daughter, Julia. So Ellie is 18. And then last but not least, this is Timothy the Blanket. Kind of crazy to name a blanket, but this belongs to my son, Will, who is 16 now, and Timothy still hangs out on Will's bed. So he is very much a part of the family, and they all are. I just can't imagine these little guys not being around. In fact, when my uh, son, Adam, went to college, and I was moving him out there, and I uh, lifted up the trunk to carry in his belongings. Buddy was laying in his cardboard box to come to college. And even when Adam comes home for a visit, he straps Buddy in the passenger seat of the car. So, as you can see, very beloved. So I'm going to set them back here while we get started. We've got Carl and Buddy and Ellie, and then we'll hang Timothy on my chair. Well, today our art project that we are going to do is uh, we are going to be making what I'm calling Miss You Bears. And the idea of this project is that even though we can't be together in person with our favorite people, our friends, our classmates, our grandparents, we get to carry them right here. We get to carry all of those people we love in our hearts, where we can always be together inside 
even when we can't be together in person, which I just love knowing that. I'm gonna bring you a little closer to me. I just love knowing that, that we're still together in here. And so, you know, I always give you lots of options. And so if you downloaded the activity kit, you are going to see a page in there that actually has the makings of a bear where you've got the head and the face and the body and then the little heart and two ears and a mouth. So even if you don't do that right now, you can certainly download that from my website and you can follow along and create your own bear that way. And I actually did that the other day just to play. And this is what it looks like in the end when you put all the pieces together. And I just pasted mine, I glued it right on a paper bag because um, it's brown and I figured why not. You could also use these various pieces and you could use them as like cutout shapes and put them on a paper bag and trace around them and you could create a brown bear that way. But I'm gonna bring you through the process of, of drawing a bear right now. So the first thing you wanna do is get out whatever color marker or color pencil that you wanna use. And this is gonna be super easy because all you do is make a big circle to start. Just like that. Big circle. And then you're going to make a smaller circle inside the big circle. So here's your big circle to start, and then you're going to do a smaller circle inside. And that's, that's like his little face. Sort of like that. And then you can do two half circles for ears, like so. And then for a body, that's easy. You just do two lines down, like that. Now, to make his nose, or her nose, you're gonna just do a rectangle. Right at the top. Just like that. And then you can make a smile coming out of his little nose. And that's going to look like a line down with two little curve ups on the side. So this kind of idea. Almost like two, two fish hooks going out either direction. And then two eyes, of course. And then draw a heart on our bear. Big heart, right in the middle. Just like your heart is right in the middle. And inside that heart is where you can write the name of someone that you can't be with right now, but who you carry around in your heart with you. And so, um, I think I'm gonna actually put one of my girlfriend's names in there. Her name is Jane, and she lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I really miss her. And so I'm gonna just write the name Jane in there. Because that's someone that I carry around in my heart. Now, as we always do, you can color in your bear using, gosh, whatever you have on hand. You can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, you can use markers, you can use watercolor. However you want to fill in your bear. Now, back to the, um, this one on our activity kit there. You might want to actually color these parts before you cut them out. You know, like, for example, where's my brown? I guess bears don't always have to be brown, but it's usually the most natural color we choose. So, for example, in this one, I might start coloring in that piece 
before I start cutting that out of my paper. And then I can start gluing and pasting. Now on this one that I did the other day on my paper bag, this also makes a really nice uh, kind of reinforcement behind the bear. And so maybe I actually cut them out. And I could mail this to my friend. I could mail this to my friend Jane with a little note on the back and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I really miss you. So it looks super cute when you can cut them out like that too. Or maybe you hang this in your window. You know, I know there's a couple neighborhoods that are doing teddy bear hunts during this quarantine. And so you might decorate your windows with some of these cute Miss You Bears. So while you are working on that, let me know if you have any questions about the demonstration. Um, oh, actually, Claire just put in the chat a link to the activity kit. Thank you for doing that. So if that's something you want to download, um, you can do that. So while you're working on your bears, and I can't wait to see what you create, and as always, please either uh, put your creations on social media or email them to Claire, because we always love to see what everybody is doing out there. Well, I'm gonna start reading for us today. And this book is called I'll Never Let You Go. And as I told you, this is actually a story about Edward the Bear and his blanket. And you're going to hear what a special relationship they have and how Edward is a little worried about his blanket and what his blanket is going to do without him when he goes to school. So we'll see how his mom handles all this. Edward and Blanky met on the first day of Edward. From that day forward, they were the best of friends and always together. So that is little baby Edward being born. And he is given a gift in that box right there of a brand new blanket. They went on walks in the park and they were together during nap time. They were together through thunderstorms. As you can see, he used his blanket to hide under. And in the doctor's office where he held on to his blanket for comfort when he was a little scared. and tucked in cozy at bedtime. I'll never let you go, said Edward to Blanky. It's true that Blanky would do anything for Edward. He'd be the table for his picnic and the roof of his fort or the cape for his magician costume. I'll never let you go, said Edward to Blanky. So there you can see Blanky doing all his jobs. He's the table for a picnic and he's the fort cover and he's part of the magician costume. Even when Edward went on vacation, he took Blanky along to play on the beach and ride in go-karts, or to toast marshmallows under the stars. One time, Blakey almost stayed in Florida when Edward left him at the spaghetti shack. The waitress ran out to the parking lot. I'll never let you go said Edward, and he put Blinky in his monkey backpack for extra 
safekeeping. They took care of each other in other ways too. Blanky dried Edward's tears when he was sad. Edward and Mama gave Blanky a bath when he had too many orange popsicle stains on him. Edward sat and waited in front of the dryer. I miss you, he said, as Blanky went around and around and around. This is good practice for when you go to school, said Mama. What is? Being without Blanky for a while. Oh no, said Edward. I'll never let him go. <laughs> Someone just wrote me a very nice note in the chat. They told me they love me. I love you too. School began after summer when the leaves started to turn orange. Why can't Blanky come to school with me? asked Edward. Because, said Mama, school is a great place to make new friends and try new things. It's part of growing up. Hmm, Edward grumbled. He'll be sad, Edward said, and covered Blanky so he couldn't hear. They're talking. Looks like Edward's eating his honey yum crunchies for breakfast. It's like me and you, said Mama. I'll be sad without you too, but more happy about your new school adventure. Can we get Blanky some new things to do so he doesn't miss me so much? Edward asked. So they made a list. He can play with my stuffed animals, and he can hang on the clothesline, and he can take a nap with Kitty, and he can help me in the garden, said Mama. Wow, he'll be busy, said Edward. Did you know that a blanket could have so many jobs to do? Will Blanky know I still love him, even when we're apart? Asked Edward. Do you know I still love you, even when we're apart? Asked Mama. Yes, said Edward. Then he will too. Mama tucked the two under their covers. When you love someone, you're always together in here. She said, and she patted her heart. Edward and Blanky liked that answer. Is that where I'll be when I'm at school? Asked Edward, putting his hand right over Mama's on her heart. Yes, forever and always, said Mama. No matter where you are, no matter how big you grow, my heart will never, ever let you go. The end. So have any of you out there ever felt sad about having to start school and leave the people you love at home? Or are you missing someone right now that you can't see because we have to be home? Adeline said no and yes. So who do you miss right now, Adeline? Who are you missing? Can you tell me their names? Well, I wait for that. I was going to show you some other things in the activity kit. On the very first page, 
I asked if you had a favorite blanket or stuffed animal and you could draw a picture of it right there. So if you didn't want to do a bear, for example, or you have someone different, like a turtle or a lion, you can draw a picture of them right here. Or you can just draw your own on your own piece of paper. So there's a space for that. Oh, Adeline said she misses her friends and her nanny and papa. And I'm sure that they're missing you too. So maybe when you finish your bear, Adeline, you can put it in the mail to your nanny and papa if they live far away. Or you could even drop it on their doorstep if they live close by. And they would see their name right in that little heart on the bear's chest. This is kind of the question that I asked on this page of the activity kit. It says, sometimes we can't be with the people we love, but we can still be connected in our hearts. And so on this page, I asked you to put the names of all the people in the big hearts who you're missing. Does anyone else have some names to add in there of who the people are who are living far away right now that you're missing? Linda said, Keely and Thomas. Are Keely and Thomas friends? Oh, Carol and Laura Beth misses everybody. You're going to have to make a bunch of bears, I think. Or you might have to make a really, really big heart. Maybe our bear, his head has to go way up here. And his body is way down here so that we can fit a lot more names in that heart. So I could put Jane and I could put Nana. We have a Nana who lives up in Wisconsin that we miss. And I have a brother that I miss. He's in Chicago. And cousins. So you can pack that heart full of all the people you miss. And then on the last page of the activity kit, I actually have a letter. And I started it for you. It says, Dear Blank. So you can fill in the name you want to write that to. And it says, No matter where you are, no matter where you go, my heart will never, ever let you go. And then I have, and one more thing. So that'll give you a little space to add your one more thing that you might want to tell them. Like, hope to see you soon, or can't wait to see you this summer. Whatever other wish you want to say out loud. Or maybe you mail that to a classmate that you're missing or a teacher. Imagine that they're surprised if they was were to receive something like that from you in the mail. That would be, that would make them feel so good inside. So tell me, is anyone working on a bear out there? Because I can only see a few people right now. I can't see if anyone's doing their creating out there. Nancy, do you have some bears going? Oh, let me see. We do have a bear. Can we all, now we can all see that, right? I think so. I think since yeah. we're talking, everyone can see us now. Yay. Can you oh, all tell me a little bit? Can you see a happy bear or a mad bear? Oh, how cute is that? Mm -hmm. Now, did you use the activity kit for that, or did you just color it or make it? it we cut out the pieces and glued it on, and now we're um, coloring it. OK. And that, and I glue. Well, you'll have to send me that one when it's done. Are you going to hang it in your window? Or are you going to put it in the mail? What do you think? Hey, what are you going to do with it? Um, I'm going to um, hang it up in my room on my door. Oh, nice. Have you been hanging a lot of your things up there? Or just that one? Well, um, this is my, on my first um, hanging up. Well, I do have a lot of pictures on my wall in my room. Uh -huh. I want to put this one on my door. Awesome. That's a great place. And I want to 
Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, well, let's see. Does anyone have any other questions about our theme today or the book or making our bears? Have I left anything out as far as instructions so that you know what you're you're doing if you're uh, if you keep working on it after we hang up today? Let's see. Uh, Adeline, I am, yes. Oh, I can't even, Thomas. <laughs> well, as you can see, this is a really um, special topic for me because all of our friends here that I introduced you to have been in our family for a long, long time. And there was actually one time when we almost lost Ellie and we left her at a hotel. We were on a trip in Wisconsin and we left her in a hotel and we were driving back to Minnesota where we lived at the time. And my daughter realized that she had left Ellie behind and we panicked. <laughs> and so I called that hotel and I said, please tell me that you have, you have found a stuffed elephant in one of the rooms. And honestly, it took them a while to get back to me, but that, page that I read to you in here about the spaghetti shack and how the blanket was almost left at the spaghetti restaurant, that was inspired by our own experience of almost losing Ellie. So a lot of times in my books, I sneak in examples of things that have happened in my own life. And I will show you, I forgot to show you this, but like on this page right here, you will see Ellie the elephant is actually in the drawings. So there she is here, and she's down here, and that's Buddy right there. So I even made her pink in a pink dress to match the real Ellie. So I like to tuck things like that in my books that are right out of my own life. And Nancy's sharing that she left her reindeer at swim lessons one night and luckily found her the next week. Oh my gosh, you had to wait a week. I, my kids would have been out of their minds. Well, we had that experience with one of my kids who lost his baby blanket. Um, he wasn't a baby, he was actually an elementary, in elementary school and he left his baby blanket at a movie night at the elementary school and we never got it back. And I'm telling you, this child is 21 years old now, and he still has a hard time <laughs> talking about the lost baby blanket. He, he will still remember that blanket. He's like, stop talking. I, I can't talk about that. <laughs> and I even bought him a new one to replace it, but it didn't quite have the same, the same feel. So we get very attached. Oh, um, Alan is asking, what is your favorite stuffed animal? She's asking that to me. Um, gosh, I don't, I'm trying to think, do I have a stuffed animal? I, I don't. I think I, I'm so uh, attached to my kids' stuffed animals. Like Carl, um, he actually hangs out on our guest bed in our upstairs. And so whenever we have a visitor, you know, I put Carl on the bed to welcome them. And my oldest son did not take Carl to college. So I was thinking Carl might be feeling kind of sad. And so I keep him around and give him a lot of love. Um, so I think my favorite animals are actually these that belong to my kids. Yeah. <sighs> well, um, as always, thanks for joining us. Um, in the creative corner today. Um, I just love to get these conversations going about how it's okay to miss people. It's okay to feel a little sad about not being with our school friends, not being with our family. But there's a real positive thing about this too in that we can still be connected even when we're not physically together. And be, uh, creativity and art and writing and talking, these are just, these are amazing tools 
to be able to use to inspire connection. Whether we're writing a little love note to someone, I still have one of my scribble hearts that we did in the very beginning um, right here, and I have, still have them on my window from our first week together. And so we can connect with, with people in our neighborhood, even though we're not hanging out together. We can send letters to our loved ones. We can send a bear out, in, out there or share it with a, a healthcare worker or a neighborhood. And so we can still connect, um, even though we can't be physically together. And I think that's a real bright spot. So I just love that um, you all are out there creating with me and, um, and helping spread those those little bright spots in the world right now. Laura said she lost her stuffed animal and she never got it back. And yeah, that's like, that's really hard. And it's okay to feel sad about that too. Um, we just kind of have to sit with those feelings sometimes and, and know that it's okay to feel that way. So next week is our last creative corner. It's hard to believe that's week five already. And we are going to be reading, I Believe in You. And this book talks about all the inner characteristics we have that make us successful. And we are going to be making rainbows and talking about who is on our own life team that helps us uh, get through the days and the years. And I think that's gonna be another really fun conversation. And we're gonna get some bright, col colorful art out of that as well. So um, I hope you all can join me for the, the last time we gather. And I think that's all I have. Claire, do you have anything else? She's shaking no. Nancy, anything else? No, okay. Thanks, Marianne. Yes, thanks everybody. We'll see you. Next week. Oh, thanks, Adeline. She says she has a lot of my books. I appreciate that. All right, you guys. Take care. See you next week. And everyone says bye. Bye from Carl and Ellie and Buddy and Timothy. Take care. Bye-bye.